When you're lost in the wild and you're scared as a child, and death looks you bang in the eye, and you're sore as a boil, it's according to Hoyle to cock your revolver and die. But the code of a man says, fight all you can, and self-dissolution is barred. In hunger and woe, <laughs> it's easy to blow. It's the hell served for breakfast that's hard. You're sick of the game. Well, now, that's a shame. You're young and you're brave and you're bright. You've had a raw deal. I know, but don't squeal. Buck up, do your damnedest, and fight. It's the plugging away that will win you the day. So don't be a piker, old pard. Just draw on your grit. It's so easy to quit. It's the keeping your chin up that's hard. It's easy to cry that you're beaten and die. It's easy to crawfish and crawl. But to fight, and to fight when hope's out of sight, why, that's the best game of them all. And though you come out of each grueling bout, all broken and beaten and scarred, just have one more try. It's dead easy to die. It's the keeping on living that's hard. When you get what you want in your struggle for self, and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts the most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. Some people may think you a straight-shooting chum and call you a wonderful guy. But the guy in the glass says you're only a bum if you can't look him straight in the eye. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear up to the end. And you've passed your most dangerous, difficult test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of life and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartaches and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass. T'was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good folks? he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar, then two. Only two. Two dollars, and who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three, but no. From the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased. The auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars, and who'll make it two? Two thousand, and who'll make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, We do not quite understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply. The touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, and battered and scarred with sin, is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He is going once, and going twice. He's going, and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand. The worth of a soul, and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand.